Hello, everyone. Welcome to our 529 Enable Solutions webinar series. We're pleased to have you join us today for our June webinar, the 529 Enable Product in Focus. My name is Mary Kriegsfeld. I'm on the ISS Market Intelligence Marketing Team and will be moderating today's webinar. We have Paul Curley, Director of Savings Research from the ISS MI 529 Enable Solutions Team. Paul will be providing an overview of the unique product structures of 529 plans and ABLE accounts from an investment lineup, platform structure, and functionality perspective. If you have any questions during the session today, please submit them to the questions section in the GoToWebinar control panel. This can be found on the, white, the right side of the screen. We'll be addressing questions throughout the presentation and at the end of the session. However, if we do not get to your question, we will follow up directly. And I will now hand the presentation over to Paul. Thank you, Mary, much appreciated. And also thank you for the attendees here today. Today, in, in light of the um, upcoming 4th of July weekend, we will be grilling up a lot of great content for you here today. Um, and in today's uh, session, product, ABLE and 529 product and focus, and that's going to be layered on top of the 529 primer, legislative update, and top trends uh, session that we had in the past. And the goal for today's session is really to provide that product training, provide industry trends, and really to get the message out there to really help the 529 and ABLE industry grow. Together, we can create a long-term term growth for both the industry and for families looking to save and pay officially for, for higher education. Today's agenda, you know, in, in building off of feedback uh, of prior sessions, we've had some great, um, you know, feedback in terms of starting out with industry announcements, provide some data and research research updates. Today, we're going to be focusing product is, product in focus and end up with the um, live question and answer. And before I forget, we will be taking uh, questions uh, live throughout um, today's session. We'll be at, please uh, jump in, ask the questions on the dashboard, and we'll be answering them throughout the session, but also at the end as well. And before we jump in, as we try to make our, our webinar series as uh, aligned as possible with the needs of, of the attendees here today and the industry and all the different people that do work within the, in the industry, we did want to ask a question about our uh, ongoing webinar series. If we should do 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, just really want to just make sure we uh, get your, your feedback. Um, Mary, are you able to launch the poll? Great, it looks like the poll is pulled up, so we'll give it another minute just to see what the results come in as. Great. Um, and <laughs> taking a quick look at the audience here, it looks like there's a great feedback on that 45 minute uh, session time slot. You know, some demand of, of 30 minutes, which makes sense given all the um, you know, time pressures, you know, today with, with, with Zoom and, um, you know, also that there's demand for four, uh, 60 minutes. With that 60 minute block, we could also provide some, some continuing uh, education in that 50 minutes, have 10 minutes Q&A. In that shorter time frame, it's, it's always great to have that, you know, you know quick uh, cut in on, on 529s and then also, you know, jump over to um, the, you know, all, all the different trends that, that are happening uh, throughout the session. So, so I appreciate the feedback and thank you so much. And as, a, as, a, as the first industry announcement, we are pivoting the 529 Conference 2020 from a in-person event to a, a digital event. It will take place for the um, you know, five days at the week of September 21st to 25th. And it'll be a, a virtual event. Each of the days will have sessions from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. each day. On Monday and Tuesday, there will be the um, 529 Essentials. And then on, on Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to have the 529 Conference. And on Friday, we're going to have the ABLE Summit. And the um, we have the session lineup on the, the conference website, 529conference.com. And we're reaching out to speakers currently to, to create the agenda for the session. Uh, great feedback so far. And, and please register. Uh, and registration will open in July. Thank you. And, and um, in addition to additional um, Industry announcements. Protege did acquire um, You Promise. You Promise has been a long-standing, um, you know, member within the 529 industry, 
And one of the great things about UPromise is really that it, um, as we kind of go shopping, if we go shopping to, for say the uh, 4th of July weekend, we go get ready for grilling, we buy some groceries, and then uh, based off, off of our purchases, there's uh, rewards that, that accrue. And for UPromise, they've been uh, you know building a system where you know those those rewards can be used to make contributions to to five to nine accounts. So that's a, so that's great news. We'll be tracking um, them over time as well. The second item is is AKF Consulting has released their College Savings Nation 2020 report. A lot of great findings within it. Um, and um, you know, thank you so much for for uh, Kieran Suyoung and and um, you know Andrew Fierstein for for creating that report. There's a lot of great you know bullet points on on the bigger picture um, industry trends, what's happening now, what ha what has happened, and where where the industry is is going going forward. So um, it was a great read. I I, I suggest anyone who's um, you know perhaps you know, in the, in the industry, um, you know, whether it be states or, or program managers, primary distributors, advisors, or all the different record keepers and those that, that are involved in the industry to, to take a look at that, at that report. Also, the uh, MSRB has, has released a, a great uh, shorter white paper, I believe it's, it's two or four pages, but it really kind of talks about that, all of that market volatility that has been taken so far in, in 2020, and really what that means for, for 529 plan account owners. So um, you know, take a look. It's it's a great read, and and of course, MSRB is a, is a great pillar for the 529 industry. Last but not least, there was a recent publication in Medium uh, by Wayne Weber of uh, GiftedCollege.com on, on five things he wished he <laughs> he was told about you know becoming a CEO. But he really did provide his perspective and and where you know he and and the team are, are looking to go. Uh, I I really like that that messaging messaging around obliterating debt and and how it's just so important to to focus on, on why we do the college financial planning. In this case, and for, and for most people, is really about how to um, you know, solve that college financial planning issue that, that does result in, in way too much student loans that, that continues to increase over time as we covered in, in the 529 primer. But you know, it's, it's a great, um, it, it was a great piece. So it was a great sort of message by, by Wayne and, and um, you know, just kind of summarizes a lot of what we try to do uh, here as well. For the Able Act side, um, you know, one of the great things about Able is that the product has launched, it's live, um, you know, great uh, feedback in terms of the structure and, and something that, that uh, you know, will be used going forward. Uh, so, so the legislation was, was launched, moving over to product, the products have launched, and, and at this stage of the uh, product, it's, it's really about getting that, that outreach um, out there, just getting the message out there, a lot of great marketing going underway. Uh, but before we, we cover all the, you know, some, sort of the marketing and distribution partnerships underway, you know, did want to mention that Virginia has, has, has uh, taken a great step by starting in July. They, they are, um, you know, basically removing that Medi Medicaid, uh, M Medicare uh, payback clawback provisions, you know, for, for their state residents, um, you know, for, for, you know, Virginia and residents in Virginia, um, you know, great news and, and take a look for other states. Um, you know, definitely worth taking a look in, in terms of how how that was kind of created, and um, you know, potent, potentially working towards that that outcome as well. But um, you know, you know, um, you know, congrats and great news. Uh, also, um, you know, for John Finch, he had a great presentation uh, for the 22nd annual Family Circle. So so keep up the great work, John, and, and all the great uh, outreach you do for the able industry. Able TN hosted um, educa several educational webinars for advocates. Uh, Lakeisha Page presented that one. Um, you know, Able TN is, is a great program, and Lakeisha is a great leader in the Able space as well. So, so thank you so much for the educational webinars. We look forward to um, you know attending those in the future as well. Uh, NAS National Association of State Treasurers ha has launched a um, a status board or a roundup status board type of, of page where it's basically Able and COVID-19 stimulus checks and how different states are, are handling you know that that situation you know long story short and in sort of boil down nature this, there's the, the stimulus checks that, that went out and, and how you know lo and behold it, in summary you know like by and large that those um, uh, stimulus checks does not count in, in the um, addition of, of the calculation used for for ben um, you know federal benefits that being said it's a great pivot point to actually um, you know, provide an opportunity to fund and, and launch and open new a ABLE accounts as well. So um, take a look at that website, has a lot of good, good updates so far and a couple of new videos. There's there's one from the ARC of, of Connecticut and um, it's not a new video um, for the ABLE by Center of Independent Features um, by JJ, but it, it's, it's new to online. Uh, she's a great leader over at, at Illinois ABLE. So you know, take a look. It was an hour session, so um, you know, small, small, medium, large in terms of of, of time slots and content. Um, you know, great uh, updates so far. 
And on that topic of the able market data, you know, that the assets continue to grow, the accounts are growing, um, you know, that, that average account size continues to, to go up. Uh, I, I did take a quick look at gross sales and gross distribution so far, and, and so far there's been over, um, you know, 500 million in, in gross contributions. That that's that's in short money going into able accounts, and there's been over 1 million, uh, 100 million uh, in gross dis distributions to date. Um, it really just shows that able accounts are are open, they're they're live, and, that, and they're already working to help families to, you know, save and, and save efficiently and pay efficiently for for their uh, qualified expenses. And, and obviously, given all the, the market volatility taking place in second quarter of 2020, and we'll be launching the um, uh, data collection tomorrow. So it'll be very intriguing, you know, as we kind of, you know, uh, go through that collect, collection analysis and reporting process to really see, you know, what, you know, how things really did, um, you know, act and react in that second quarter 2020 uh, time period. And another uh, industry update, um, you know, it, as it relates to the 529 industry analysis, which has recently been released. Um, you know, there's there's a couple new findings coming out. One is the table below that really should kind of reports how has the percentage of total beneficiaries changed ages over time. That that first um, you know red block of 7, 11, and 22 percent, roughly the the storyboard there is that 40 percent of 59 account beneficiaries are um, you know less and under the age of 10. And and what that really means is that with all that market volatility that did take place, it's just a great time for people to take that very long term view. In terms of um, you know saving and, and paying for college, with all that market volatility, if and not anything else, um, you're basically saving and paying for college at, at a discount or 20 or 30 percent discount as, as the market goes down and then goes up. Um, so it's a great opportunity for, for for those that do have that long term view to really you know save and pay efficiently for college. That eight percent that that are in that late stage uh, college planning, it's another uh, category that um, you know where. You know, the, roughly a third of 59 accounts are open for you know those that that are are newborns in a zero to two bracket. Um, there's also a, a secondary persona or, or category for for those late stage planners. Perhaps the, the parents are are up late night sweating out how to save and you know mostly pay and, and probably repay the the cost of college. So we've um, you know seen a, seen a rapid increase of, of late state planners. The other category of, of interest is is that two percent increase. Um, over over time, um, for those uh, with, with account where 59 plan account beneficiaries are over the age of 21, um, and, and we see that category as as being um, people now fully understand. Perhaps it wasn't as evident before that that 59s aren't just for ch children or grandchildren. That it can be used to save and pay for for those looking to retool or, or repivot their own career going forward. So we we expect. Um, you know, more and more people to save for for their own careers. Obviously, with all the market volatility going taking place, that we think that 529s are a great tool for those not just for children and grandchildren, but for those in the, in the mid career, uh, changing and acceleration as as well. So uh, upwards and downwards to product and focus. Do a quick time check. Um, you know, so for as a as a first step, you know, as we look at the product, the base level of of 529s are the investments. So we'll. We start here, and then we'll we'll layer on the, the various conversations. But you know, first and foremost, one of the conversations that that commonly comes up is is what are the um, you know what are the fees for 529 plans, and how has it changed over time? This chart looks at how the uh, fees have changed over the five-year period, going from 2014 to, to 2019. You know, by and large, there's been a, a 14 uh, basis point decrease over or that time period overall. But you know, that that breakout has been um, you know, decrease whether it be from underlying investments, whether that be you know as the industry you know shifts as as even the broader financial service industry has shifted. Uh, broadly speaking, you know, from a, an active investment manager to, to passive, we've seen a 10, 10 basis point uh, decrease in, in um, total annual asset base fee. This this is stacking and 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 um, you know benchmarking all 529 plans, all 92 529 savings plans. Uh, hence that that six basis points on on distribution and marketing that is typically held within um, that the advisor sold plans as a quick side note. Um, so every single quarter we're we're, we're benchmarking that those five thousand uh, investment options each quarter. Broadly speaking, investment options have decreased, and that, and that um, number of of portfolios or, or investment uh, options you know per an account has broadly been been expanding. So so we'll be covering you know how those uh, portfolios have been been expanding over time. And before we jump into into that deeper layer, you know, first we take a quick look at how the um, you know how the 
investment types are, are, are managed um, you know, by, by distribution channel. You know, broadly speaking, over time, what we've been seeing is that more and more assets um, being allocated to age base within the advisor sole channel. Like what, one of the main uh, talking points to that is really the, the launch, the, the relatively recent launch of age based tracks within you know the um, you know College America, uh, College America 529 plan, but by American funds. Um, it's you know, and, and so as as that plan has launched, it has increased um, the the advisor sole channel overall has been increasing its assets. Um, you know, within that age-based uh, investment type, you know, flipping over to, to direct, we've seen more uh, investments, um, more assets being managed within that individual, um, you know, investment type. So we've been seeing that more and more, and some, and, and there's a variety of, of reasons for that as well. And, and, and as we think about all the, the market volatility, <laughs> all the market volatility. As, as a quick side note, when I started as a, as a Research analyst in 2018. I, I think my first day was was mid June 2018, and you know it definitely is perhaps not to the extent, but you know waking up every day to a you know you know several hundred uh, points up, several hundred points down. Um, you know there, there just seems to be more and more discussion around that um, conservative investment option lineup, and as as the interest rates um, as as um, as as nudged along by the Federal Reserve is, is getting closer and closer to zero. There's been more and more discussion around you know, how that impacts the uh, conservative investment lineups in terms of not just usage, but also offering at the, at the plan level. Um, as a quick side note, those, that percentage of assets is, is really the, the investment option level. Uh, it, it, it excludes the, um, you know, say there's an allocation within an age-based track to a stable value FDIC insured money market account. It does not in include that. Um, and as a quick side note, as can be seen, um, about half the assets are within age-based um, investment options. But you know, moving forward, so that 5.7% of, of assets is, is that is is the um, you know uh, conservative investment options within uh, both the individual investment options and static investment options. But lo and behold, we've seen, like broadly speaking, an increase uh, going from the fourth quarter. Um, you know, end of end of uh, 2019, basically to the end of the first quarter of uh, 2020, we've seen an increase in assets in that conservative investment options. So, and again, as we uh, collect and report on the second quarter uh, data, we'll be watching that those numbers, you know, very closely. And it, here's a, a quick look into those those plans that do offer the stable, you know, stable value. There's a, a much longer list within the direct sole plan uh, than the advisor sole plan, but we, we're going to be, you know, watching very closely in terms of which plans are are changing, uh, swapping between, say, money market after it's insurance and stable value. We'll be reporting that that more going forward. You know, in, in terms of that demand of, of that conservative investment options, it, it really has, you know, remained very stable for the stable value options. There's been a, a decrease in, in money market funds. Um, you know, and, and, and this, I, I should take a step back is, and say that this, this is based on our annual survey of financial advisors, um, which we've been doing for, for 10 years now. So th this chart looks at, and we do, within our survey of advisors, it really asks, like, hey, what types of investment types do you prefer within your 529 plan? And, and based on, on, on the survey results over the years, we've seen a very, you know, basically very, uh, very stable uh, demand for stable value options over the years. We've seen a drop off in, in the money market funds and um, FDIC insured, um, you know, perhaps a slight uptick, but really just a, a stabilized uh, percentage there. And when we when we flip the conversation every year we do a annual survey of of parents as as reported in our 529 industry analysis 2020 and every single year um, this kind of asks the same question but for parents and lo and behold we, we see a very high demand for age based individual um, and but, but we don't see as high of a percentage um, I guess or, or, or in terms of a stack rate ranking in terms of demand for um, you know, stable value in, in comparison to, to say money markets. So, so while advisors are, are focused a little bit more on the, on the stable value, the uh, direct um, you know parents themselves, so they're focused a, a little bit more on on money markets. So I, I think there continues to be a, a need for um, you know education on, on that side. You know, pivoting over to ESG. Um, you know, we, we've seen a, an expansion of, of investment options, and investment lineups. You know, for those uh, investment types. I, I think one item. Uh, to note is that you know by and large it's been individual investment options so like adding on say uh, like social choice portfolio for for California I, I think um, what's interesting is that TD Ameritrade for you know in, in Nebraska they've really you know gone ahead and really you know launched a, a full suite of of age-based uh, socially aware 
um, you know, tracks and, and, and investment options. So, so kind of going beyond, you know, one or two or, or, or a select set of investment options to, to like a full lineup of, um, you know, socially aware types of portfolios. So we, we do expect that to continue. Another interesting development is that is that pivoting over from enrollment-based glide pass to, I mean, pivoting from age-based, uh, you know, glide pass to, um, you know, enrollment-based uh, glide pass. You know, one one small example would be to say in, in, in the investment lot of pay invest in this option if if your child is say two years old to hey like this is use this investment option if you're saving for like a, a goal that's in 16 years. And, and we see, and, and and that kind of pivot, you know, aligns with what we have been saying in, in prior you know months, you know, in terms of that ex expanded usage of five to nines from from college to K through twelve to uh, apprenticeships and student loans. So we've you know a, as as um, you know the end usage end use of five to nines have expanded. So so has the the um, you know offering overall of the enrollment uh, based glide path. So more to come. And and as that legislation can continues to expand and legislation expands, also usage expands for five to nine savings plans. We expect uh, this to become more and more of a, of a mainstay conversation for the industry. Um, and I, I think I think what's very interesting as well, as I was putting together the deck, there's there's definitely a, a definitive, you know, breakout or difference between, um, you know, the investment options, but also the, the wrappers as well. So when we think about the investment options, it's almost that, that very core piece of of a five to nine plan, you know, the, looking at the investments, here's and, and that determines so much of the of the uh, returns, you know, for the the portfolios. I think I see a quick question, so let me see if I can take a quick look. What specific legislation is driving the shift from age based to to enrollment based? Um, I I think that the looking at the at um, and, and thank you, Kay, for, for the question. And, and um, I obviously we, we asked for for questions throughout, so I'm happy that that you asked the uh, the, the question, Kay. M much appreciated. If we think about the um, you know the the, the Secure Act, you know, being a, a specific piece of legislation that that has expanded the um, qualified expenses for five nines at, at the federal level, um, you know, from um, you know college, you know, to K and, and K through twelve to apprenticeships and um, to, to uh, Trying to perfect. Sorry, working on the functionality. Um, you know, expanding that that qualified distribution to uh, apprenticeships and student loans. That that one is changing the um, you know that the end data at which someone will, will be using the the five nines. Um, in terms of other ones, there was the uh, TCJA uh, not too long ago that expanded the the five to nine qualified distributions from from college to, to K through twelve. So that that was another one. Uh, prior prior to that one, and of course, uh, um, not of course, but previous prior to that, the expansion of, of 529s being used for college, but also to all those peripherals as well, whether it be, um, you know, monitors, sound systems, um, you know, all the all the internet charges as well. So, so that's that's been an interesting e expansion as well. In terms of uh, what's going on in, in the pipeline, uh, other items that, that could be of interest is is really the, the evaluation of. Um, you know, qualified expenses, qualified, you know, rollovers, you know, being able to roll over five, um, uh, 401ks to 529s without paying a 10% penalty or 529 assets that, that, that just weren't used for college or to IRAs and, and how that, that functionality would, would function. And obviously that, that would change the, the time frame that, that one would want to, you know, save for, but also the, all the different uh, asset allocations as, as well. Um, thank you. Just gonna take a quick look at the uh, the questions. Um, Richard Roberts, um, might we see socially responsible investing options that address economic inequality across race? Uh, th thank you so much, uh, Patricia, and, and um, you know, give, give to college .com for the for the question. Um, I, I do think it's a timely question. I, I think that um, you know, obviously giving it. Given everything that is happening today, that it is something that the you know boards, um, you know, the, the state boards and their proc partners, you know, you know, should and, and, and could have conversations about. So, so time will tell. Obviously, um, you know, obviously it will come down to the boards making the decisions with the program manager, the investment managers making making those like having those conversations. But also, also it, it it flips over to the end users as well, the the parents. The employers, the, the financial advisors, and all the other you know partners and 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 um, you know distribution channels throughout the industry to really say to the states and, and the 
program managers to, that there is demand for that one. And obviously here today, it, that questions like that like, do help to um, raise that question. Great, thank you. I think we're good for questions right now. So, so, <laughs> so, so back at it. Um, yeah, thank you so much for for the the time. So, so going back at, into the the platform perspective. So, there's the there's the investment options piece to five to nines and enable accounts, but and then also you know pivoting over to the flexibility of, of the wrapper that is around investments. I I think each and every one of these bullet points you know could be a presentation in in and of itself. Um, so, looking at the like the all the different changes on on the share class innovation, whether whether it be moving from C C, C shares to A shares to to, to fee-based investment options, there's been a number of changes that have that changes around the investment options that that does not necessarily boil down to the investments themselves. Laying on top of the investment options, there's the state, state and federal tax incentives and, and qualified distributions on, on that side. And for financial aid and state tax planning, I, I think that that those are, are various pieces that, that are interesting to 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 track and should be tracked. Um, that that necessarily is like it's, it's basically beyond um beyond the investments but does relate to the the product and how it's structured An another interesting piece around the, the topic of platform is is really the automatic contributions the money coming in just how how to, how to make those that functionality easier in terms of the, that automatic contributions changing around the, the minimum minimum and maximum contribution levels i think fidelity uh, last month did, did announce that they, you know, within their, or, or perhaps it was their gifting platform, just, you know, decreasing the minimums and increasing their maximums on that gifting platform. So, so that's an interesting development. And of course, there's all the different functionality re relating to RAs, employers, and gifting. And so we've been seeing more and more functionality that, that kind of extends beyond just the pure investments, but also the, also, also the functionality and the platforms related to, to 5 chains. Of course, with the you know, so much mobile activity with the phones, we've seen an ex expansion of, of the, you know, making websites much more cleaner to use than in the expansion of, of apps and, and just making uh, the, even that, that topic of operations, you know, within the advisor soul channel, the uh, more and more plans going omnibus or level, level going from level zero to two and three. And, and so just making the business easier to do. Let, last not, but not least, there's been a number of, of conversations around just making the distributions easier to do and the functionality around that. You know, Flywire is a, a you know one example of a firm that's just trying to make it easier to make those distributions you know from the 529s uh, directly to to the states. And that that aligns with the feedback we've heard from parents as well. Top five top five plan factors being investment performance, low fees, and those, those first two bullet points really. You know, focuses on on what we covered first today around those investment options, whether it be the categories, the the fees, the the number of investment options, and all all that. So, so it is interesting that um, you know for today's presentation we are talking about the investment options and fees, the state tax incentive that that relates to the to the to the wrapper. The, the ease of use continues to be an, a topic of focus. How, how do we make you know the the business easier to do for 529 plans. Just just making it simpler, ease of use is, is important, not just for, for parents, but advisors and employers as well. And for those account features, just making that, you know, all those different, all the different functionality tweaks, changes to that platform. I, I think there were 16 different le levers that we did evaluate. So there's many different ways to improve the, uh, you know, 529s, you know, for parents. And looking at the, the benchmark of satisfaction to date, you know, broadly speaking, you know, parents are, are satisfied with 529 plans and they're happy. And and for those that, you know, enroll through advisor, they're they're by and large happy with the you know support that they have received, you know, from, from their advisor. And for that educational material, slightly less, but you know, that you know, in terms of satisfaction, but by and large, you know, 529 parents, 529 using parents are, are satisfied overall. I think it aligns with a lot of the, you know, keeping things simple around the, the back to school shopping. Which I guess you know we'll see what happens in the fall, but just sort of the the, the communication and making sure that the pieces are 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 there. That photo, um, <laughs> the the first photo is actually just from Staples that that I you know during back to school last year for, for myself and my family we saw that we saw the signs and and so it, we we thought it was timely to to use that that photo. The one on the bottom right you know comes from 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 Maine fame. Um, when when I went to the Children's Museum in Portland, Maine, we did see there was you know you know flowers around camps. 
there's flyers around 529 plans. So I thought it was just very timely that, um, you know, within that, that, you know, within the direct channel and the, and the parents, they're happy, but we're also perhaps, you know, doing a great job industry-wide in terms of just making sure that the, that we're getting the, the right content to the right people at the right time. Flipping the conversation to the advisor satisfaction levels, 20, uh, 82% of advisors are satisfied overall, but you know, that I, what's, what's intriguing is that 52% of advisors are, are satisfied with their product training. Hence the, the photo on, on the right side from the TV show paid off, just, you know, there's just a certain level of frustration for the product training. And so the advisor is satisfied overall, but that, that gap remains in, in an opportunity. I, yeah, so I, I think there's, there's more to be said about that one. But as a quick refresher and reminder for those, those that are financial advisors and from the home offices on, t on today's call, the top th three reasons to do the college financial planning business, you know, continues to be en engage that next generation, you know, make sure that, you know, it's not just the parent, parents talking to the children, but also the, you know, uh, parents, uh, grandparents talking to the children as well, should be doing the business anyways. It's the top one or two priorities, you know, for clients and easy to do. You know, I always talk about Brock Jolly and the college funding coach, just, you know, talking about that blue ocean effect where it's the top top need for client, but advisors, you know, by and large, just haven't been servicing the, the clients nearly as much as they should within that area. So it's a big, it's a big gap and should be doing the business anyways. Don't leave money on the table. Um, there's just enough state and federal tax benefits and scholarships available. So, and of course, the, as we said, top three, but the fourth one is just, just to stop the 401k raiders. You know, it's, if people, um, you know, just don't save enough for college, that they'll be by and large, you know, based on, on our research and data and also feedback as well, that they're rating their, their retirement accounts, their 401ks, our IRAs to pay for college. So obviously something that, that wants to be uh, slowed down. So, so and a lot of the, these three different bullet points aligns with the five channel product structure and functionality, um, you know, creates that opportunity. You know, but by and large, that gap for the advisor satisfaction between the advisor uh, satisfaction overall, but also that need for more product training. I think we'll get there together in due time. Um, it's definitely one of the, the main reasons for, for me that, um, you know, I wanted to, you know, jump in and step up and, and, and do my, my best to, to, to the best of my ability just to, you know, help, you know, fill that, that product uh, training gap. But by and large, um, you know, just, you know, thank you so much for your collaboration support for the speaking opportunities that that photo was from, uh, you know, me being invited from uh, you know, Brock Jolly to, to do a fly in and, and present over, you know, 60 advisors live in terms of just, you know, getting that message out there that, that, that got, got milk, milk campaign for, you know, the importance of college financial planning, but also provide that product training um, that's, that's just dearly needed within the space. As a quick recap, we today we talked about industry announcements, data and research updates, 529 able product and focus questions and answers. I think, you know, if you could fill out the, the questions at, at the end of the seminar in terms of just, you know, what what more you would need, but also we have a couple other questions that we're looking to work in. It's a quick sign out, save the date for July 31st. That, that's currently our, our next webinar and we're currently scheduled to present on 529 within the, that employer channel. Um, and with that, disclosures, we'll do a quick check on, um, questions and answers as well. So I'll, I'll take a pause and as I have done in the past, I'll just drop off the screen. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. I thank you everyone thank for you. joining the webinar. Um, if you haven't submitted your question yet, please take a moment now to submit them in the uh, GoToWebinar questions box on the right side. And thank you to all those who have already shared your questions. Um, there was a question about the webinar recording and we will be sharing the recording um, that will be emailed out after the session today. And all of the recordings from our webinar sessions, our monthly webinars are also available online. And then, um, Paul, a, a question did come through, um, another one. You know, how do you see 529 plans changing over the next, you know, three to five years? And what about um, ABLE products? Great. Thanks for the question. Um, on the, the 529 side, um, you know, we definitely project out for over the next three to five years a, a decrease in fees with that total annual asset base fee continuing to, to, to decrease. We expect the investment options, uh, more and more options to be available. A continuation of easy use, continuation of increasing of that qualified higher education expenses, and that that savings gap just continues to be an issue where the the cost continues to be very high. The um, you know that savings level just continue not to be large enough, and that gap continue continuing to widen and widen. So that that need for championing that that message of the importance of saving, saving for college, and and just getting the, the message out there for 
you know, for parents, advisors, and, and employers, you know, will will continue. As it relates to, to Able, I, I think that the um, you know the products ha have launched. We expect more and more uh, usage to increase. We've seen a, a gross sales um, you know rapidly in increase as more and more people are using it, and more and more partnerships being being created and built. Um, you know, so the the product has launched. The uh, marketing and messaging is is getting out there, and I, I've seen Able do a great job of of just getting up up to speed in terms of of, of building that awareness. And I think there's a number of, of things as well that that will accelerate Able, as did happen with 529s, and whether that be the Able Age Adjustment Act or more and more state or federal, um, you know, just uh, initiatives, you know, and, and incentives such as you know Virginia's. Removing that Medicare clawback provision. So more to come on five tonight. More to come on Able. Great, thanks, Paul. Um, <laughs> just sorry, reading some of these questions coming in. Um, Uh, it was a question about the conference. I, I know that we had originally had it scheduled for the in-person in Orlando to end on a Saturday for those wanting to visit Universal and Disney, um, which, you know, they might be closed, but, you know, maybe there's a way to include some virtual rides in our virtual conference. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Patricia. We'll, we'll definitely look at that as we're building out the virtual conference. Yep. And uh, as, as a quick side note, the uh, Star Wars ride, um, you know, was was built out or, or just sort of uh, expanded. So we, we look forward to um, you know finding ways to, to incorporate the themes this, this year, and, and of course we look forward to uh, you know back to live um, sessions in 2021. Uh, thank you so much, Patricia. Well, thanks, Paul, and um, thanks to everyone else for joining the webinar. It looks like that's all the questions that came through. Um, but you know, if there are any additional questions that you have, you know, we invite you to to please reach out to Paul directly. Um, there will also be a follow-up email that will be sent soon with a link to the webinar recording, as we mentioned, and you know, contact information for our 529 ABLE team. If you would like to review anything covered today or have any questions about our products or solutions. So thank you all for attending and um, have a wonderful rest of your day.